Oh, the family of Richo, Brownie and Hummer. We've gone full circle. Not full circle, because we haven't got Lakey in the, in the chair, <laughs> Brownie, but we're back here at Croc oh, Studios. Right. You took over from Lakey, I didn't did, you? Yeah. <laughs> Where is Lakey? Oh, well, he's not here. He's I playing, towed uh, Lakey up a few times as well. Did you? Yeah. He's a good footballer. <laughs> wasn't too good on, wasn't too good on, the, uh, back from on the podcast. But we're full, so we're, we're back in the Croc Studios. So if you're watching, it's, and it probably sounds a little bit different, looks a bit different, because this is a true story. All right, we've been evacuated from our building. Up on level 25, we're on Collins Street. There's a, there's a team called Colliers. Now, they're a bunch of commercial real estate yeah. guys. They're, and they're all, you know what commercial real estate agents are? Happy with they're themselves. Very happy that with where themselves. Big Michael Gardner works? Uh, yes. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. 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 He might have been. I normally like, wear the, <laughs> on the weekend, the, the, the pink polos with, yeah. the, with the sweat the over. Yeah. Over. Yeah. Very happy I with themselves. I don't see Gardy wearing that sort of stuff. No, though. no. He's leveraged, going harder than that. They're black bean dubbies leveraged to the hills. Uh, but anyway, so they all returned to the office. I ran into them. I had to go pick up some stuff from the office. Uh, ran into one of them. They returned to the office right. on, on this week and they went out for a massive lunch to celebrate. Yeah. They went up to this Indian restaurant up Queen Street. Yeah. They all got back from this Indian restaurant sort of at the same time. All of them got on the steamer pretty much like over a two hour period. The, yeah. These steamers just got absolutely overloaded. They have blocked the toilet so bad at 367 Collins Street, it flooded the whole building. The whole, the whole building, building. is closed. Oh, too many vindaloos, too many samosas. They've flooded 367 <laughs> Collins It's always the vindaloo, isn't it? You've got to be careful with the vindaloo. Yeah. I do love a hot, hot vindaloo, though. They are go good. Butter chicken. It's the safety option, butter chicken. <laughs> Especially if you're all going so to the same what you're saying is that's after. why we're here today. That's it's why we're here at the beautiful issue. croc. The New beautiful studio. Croc but I want to ask studio. a question before we get into the footy. Are you two OK? Yeah, we had a an incident, And it was an ugly incident during the week where... We stitched you up, but it must be said that on a WhatsApp group, you called this man here, who one of the most courageous players I've ever come across, a coward. He a did. coward. I did, but I throw the term coward around a lot. I must uh, admit. And I, but Richo didn't know that. I didn't know, I didn't know that. And when it came through on the WhatsApp, I thought <laughs> you overstepped the mark a little bit, Rich, to be so honest. So what was you. funny, though, and I'll let you in on the uh, little secret, that Richo then texts me and said... Uh, Let's go with this. Let's let Hummer think that I'm really flat with him. So then I went and texted our two bosses, uh, Pato and Leggy, and we got on to it. And I said that Richo sometimes is a little bit sensitive about this sort of stuff when you talk about respect. And I really think you yeah. disrespected him. <laughs> uh, so we went through this long process. I, I, I threatened to quit the podcast. And I'm not going to lie, my, uh, my, pu my dot pocket up. It just went to a little pimple. I was like, oh, <laughs> went, oh dear. <laughs> this guy is you, he, he's your quintessential yeah. up and down sort of guy. Uh, at one point, he goes from being really upset that he's upset you, yeah. and he's like, oh, I've stuffed the podcast, Richo doesn't <laughs> like me, too. Absolute rage that you're so sensitive. Yeah. Now, I'm going to send a couple of text messages here. Now, this is what a narcissist, he's a, a, an absolute narcissist. I don't know. I didn't know he was such a sensitive soul. So I've he's called talking him about me. A lot worse. Yeah. Should be sharing this to Richard. But then he goes on. This is what happens <laughs> to overly nice blokes talking about yourself. <laughs> they are so nice to everyone else. They don't understand when someone pots them. It's not in their DNA. Now, Rich, but it gets better. You must have missed. You must have he, missed my footy career. I got potted quite a bit over this. Because then he goes, if he's that sensitive and doesn't have a thick skin, I don't think he's sports bet material. Oh. I see. Did wow. you call for my sacking, did oh, you? I did. But anyway, to make, cut a long story <laughs> short, eventually Rich sent me a big, long-winded text <laughs> apologising. And then off the back of that, I sent through the Ashton Kutcher uh, punk Yeah, the punk gift. gift. You got me. I got you. But you not only was it an apology, <laughs> but in the apology, which you've screenshotted and sent us, <laughs> he did apologise. It was a long-winded and sucky apology. But in that, he, uh, at one stage, Pato, our boss, mentioned that maybe you stepped down from hosting this week. <laughs> and he wrote, Pato even mentioned that maybe I stepped down this week, but he's an actual coward <laughs> and he can get... To the boss. About the boss, not yeah. thinking that maybe you're going to screenshot it, which has been uh, sent around the office. So you, yeah, you reckon I mean, you're safe? So, uh, you reckon you're safe at sports because there's a lot of restructuring going on at the moment, and now you've called well, the boss. I, I an mean, it would have been coward. nice if we didn't air our, our private grievances. Uh, uh, what's what happens in WhatsApp should stay in WhatsApp. No, but we're but good. We're we good. are good. We smoothed it all over. Before we get cracking, though, a big thanks to begrudgingly Callaway. 
Uh, I'm not sure if you guys went and got fitted. I certainly didn't. No. Uh, but we're very happy to get Callaway on board. Part of the Callaway stable, me and Matthew. We're so, going to go out there uh, in a couple of weeks' time. It's a very busy time leading in, but uh, the good people at Callaway, thank you very much. So they're providing us with a full set, brand full new. Full set. Beautiful. Beautiful. Two of you. Not Beautiful. I'm getting nothing. Despite Beautiful. this being my brainchild... We'll get you a couple all... of tees. You can tee up our <laughs> balls. Hey, we did have sport back, though, and what, it was just so good. I mean, I'm not a big NRL fan, but I, yeah. I, I watched three or four games over the weekend... And I've got to say, they, they trialled the crowd noise. Now, mm. it, it's a bit different for them. They can have the tight camera angle yeah. so you don't, see, you don't see the crowd as much. But the crowd noise, I think, was absolutely magnificent. I thought it was great. And I can't... I, mm. I, you couldn't argue against don't, it. Don't Terrific. say too much because I want to get into this a bit later. But I thought it was great. I think it really works in league because, obviously, the closer you get to the try line, you know, you can build up the crowd noise. But I thought it worked well. well. you are Channel 7. Uh, Channel 7 rolling this they technology are. out. Channel 7 Ooh. are going to use A little bit tougher, though, isn't it? Because yeah. you're going to have to get the ball right. So when the ball and then the booze for the I umpire, because you're going oh, either yeah. way. It's going to be a tough one. I think with AFL, it's got to be a little bit more subtle. It can't quite be as loud as probably the NRL crowd noise, but I think it'll work. It's better mm. than nothing. Is it a two-man job or a one-man job in the AFL? What do you mean? Well, a two-man... Well, one man <laughs> next to another man, and they do the controls, because there's a lot more to AFL than there is NRL. I wouldn't have a clue how many people need to be involved, mm. mate. But NRL uh, would I, be, it does should be work. Have you seen how they do it? On the broadcast. Mate, I don't do the production side of things, Nate. Do you want? You're going to start having to go at me now. Maybe you should take a little bit of interest. <laughs> Jeez, we need footy back or two. Hey, uh, Gil, thankfully, has confirmed the quarters are going to go back to 20 minutes because have you see it's where you see the Twitter sphere in harmony. But I, I, one thing that they were certain of, there was not a single fan in the world saying, I want less footy. So no. thankfully we're going back to 20 minutes. I think common sense has prevailed here because if you did look at the feedback, the crowd don't want to lose more and more game time. I think, it, I think it's a smart move for this year because they're obviously concerned about players not having that pre-season where they've had to go away and come back. I think they're worried about soft tissues. We've already seen it, Nate. So I think, it, I think it's smart for this year, but, yeah, common sense has prevailed. What about the interchange as well? What do you think, Nath? The interchange? <laughs> I think it should stay the way it is. Did you do any homework for this week? I did. I did a lot. <laughs> I set up a big debacle between you two. <laughs> the interchange should stay as is, Richard. Hey, uh, Prestia has come out this week as well. <laughs> well the interchange isn't on there. <laughs> I'm looking at the rundown. <laughs> You oh, do dear. a lot of work on this show. What, uh-huh. what do you do, Frowdy? As we've got a restructure coming. There's a, a few coming in from the Bed Easy stable as well. I, I'd just be a little bit more nervous as I was <laughs> maybe working a little bit harder. Hey, Presti has come out this week. He would pick Gary Ablett over Dustin Martin any day of the Interesting week. Interesting one, Who Matthew. would you pick? Who would you pick? Well, it's a good... Problem to have, Gary Ablett. Which Gary Ablett is it? I think Gary Ablett. Now Gary Ablett. Over the last 20 years. It's at their best. I think he's the best midfielder of the last 20 years. I mean, he's up there with Chris Judd, Nathan Buckley, these guys, and I think Gary Ablett is the best. But in terms of a leader and maybe who the the boys would follow more on field wise, I think maybe Dusty's got a little bit of a nod, but I just think Gary's. Probably the better player still, but, gee, Dusty's still got four or five years ahead of him. Yeah, it's it's a really tough one, but I think you're right, Nathan. I think Ablett is the best midfielder of the last 25 years, and that's including Chris Judd and, and those sort of players. So, look, in their peak, if you lined them up, I think you say Ablett. But right now you would say Martin, clearly, because um, Ablett's coming towards the Who would the end inspire your teammates more? Oh, there's no doubt Dustin, he's got that charisma that, yeah. you, know, you know, charismatic characters, you sort of, even if they're a little bit aloof, you still want to get in behind them. Yeah. And I think he's got more He's got more charisma about him. Gary's a bit of left of centre as well, isn't he? Yeah. He's a yeah little little I can imagine uh, Dusty character. being very good at Mad Monday and yeah. getting all the boys yeah. around they're him and different. having a real good ding-dong go, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> they're different personalities, no doubt about that. Uh, the sad, this is also sad news because this is a player that every single footy fan loves to go and watch. Buddy Franklin, did his hammy, you do your hammy in your 30s, it's a, it's a three-month injury, really, yeah. especially when you rip it right off the bone. Well, it ended your he, career, didn't it? It is. That, that's, that's the thing, Nate. I, they'd be getting worried now because it's two years in a row now he's yeah. had a bad hammy, Rich, so you've got to put him away now, Nate. Had a great run. So 12 weeks they're talking about, which brings him back in around 12 or 13. Look, unless they're in finals contention, yeah. Sydney, I'd be just putting Buddy on ice and looking yeah. uh, towards 2021 because he is the most watchable player in the competition still. We want him out there. You get this whole conjecture about has he been value for the Swans? Of course he has. What do you, what do you think? I th- 
You're a Hawthorne well, supporter. I'm a Hawthorne supporter. I'm happy, but I, I mean, I love the big bud. Because it's going to come back to the No, because the thing it? is, they would have paid the same amount. If they got it for seven years, they would have had to pay the same amount anyway. So I don't, these last two, three years, everyone knew yeah. that he, was, he weren't going to get his best footy out of it. You, nah. Yes, they didn't get a premiership, but I think they got seven good years out of him. Absolutely. I, I think whatever happens now, it, it doesn't matter. They Still played some amazing footy yeah. in Sydney. I he's, think they've definitely got their cash worth. He's been huge for them up there. The PR, yeah. the marketing, getting people through the gate in a market which isn't AFL is buddy. But if you have a look at his actual numbers up there, he's been a four-time All-Australian at Hawthorne, four-time All-Australian at Sydney. He's been a two-time Coleman medalist at Hawthorne, two at Sydney. So he is produced yeah. on field. And even his goals, Nato, 3.18 at Hawthorne, 3.08 at Sydney. Mm. So his numbers are the same. He's been really good value. See what that was? That was a stat. That's homework, Nate. That is homework. Well done. <laughs> good homework, Matt. I, I would I say, what were you like as a student? Oh, he was very... <laughs> he, he sat down the back, Nate, and he didn't pay any attention. That's what he did. And he went out and threw VB at cop cars at, uh, at 18. Hey, w this studio, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, is mm -hmm. this the studio that Sam McClure sat in and told Eddie Maguire he would resign? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think they recorded that at Channel 9, yeah. Oh. yeah let's stuff that one up That there. was gutsy by Scoop, was wasn't it? <laughs> would you have done that? Uh, no? not, to, uh, not to Ed. That was gutsy. Oh, it, it, what, it was... It's a form of courage. Did yes. you work at Channel Nine, Eddie? It was a form is of Channel he's a, Nine. He's a huge Eddie, uh, uh, overpowering character, and uh, why not? He's been doing it for the best part of thirty years. But Sam did err when he said, um, "You know, it's changed to Eddie." He said oh. it, it has changed, and uh, there's a certain length you won't go to for a story yep. these days, which like a red rag to a bull to one of those old-time journalists. Obviously, Sam thinks there's a new way. Eddie still likes the old way, and um, there's no middle ground for there. Have you ever uh, had your bluff called? Because that by was the, by, by the anyone. Media. Like, have you ever done like? Because that remember, was Sam I've, saying that. I rang just... a journo once, only once in my career. Yeah, it was Big Russ Holmesby. You know, Big yeah. Russ from from uh, yeah, yeah. Inside Footy. Now, Big Russ wrote an article, and he was basically saying in the article that myself and Chris Tarrant were wasted talents. Right, wasted talents. Didn't Oof. didn't do enough. Blah blah blah. Russ. Now. I can't question that. That's Russ's personal opinion and he's entitled to it. So I went through the article pretty closely and I noticed that Russ... He had the highlighter out. I noticed that Russ had got some numbers wrong. So they're things that I can pull him up on. Right? <laughs> so what did I read... he get wrong? Well, he had, um, he had stats in there like, you know, possessions per game and goals per game and they were just totally wrong. So I rang Russ one day and I said, look, Russ, if you don't rate me... That's well and good. That's fine. That's your personal opinion. But get your numbers right, mate. <laughs> 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 hey, uh, before we just start launching into the, the, the show proper, Cal Toomey and Mitch Cleary, good friend of the show, good friend of Sportsbet Mitch Cleary. We had him at, uh, remember we had him at the uh, Derby Day races. We did. Cracking fellow from afl.com.au. Jeez, we had a good win that day, mate. Did you? Jeez, oh, yep. that was just winner after winner, weren't they? Oh. We might be back as well. Races yeah. going to be around in September. I hey, we but what they did do, and I'm not really sure what the significance was, but you know, if they're trying to fill fill column inches. They had a they did a podcast dedicated to their favourite Tasmanian footballers. Right. Oh. Who was that? This was Mitch Cleary and Cal Toomey. Yeah, I know. You com, do you? not know that. Right. <laughs> Who do they work for? I worked with Mitch at uh, 3RW when he was on Sports Star, and I think is he with AFL. He's at AFL.com, yeah, yeah, he's with well, AFL.com. you just told us that, so yeah. yeah. Cal Zumi does all the young talent. Now, I know, Cal. Now, you are a very, very proud Tasmanian. Yeah, so what was the... Where would you put when yourself? When it suits him. When it suits him. <laughs> he is Tasmanian when it suits him. Where in, would you put in, yourself? In terms of what? It's just as a favourite Tasmanian footballer. Well, I, oh, well, I think you've got... Well, you've got plenty. We've got Harry Waltz. Well, we'll go you've through got, it. You've so got we've Peter got, Hudson. You've we've got, got one and two. Paul Hudson. We've got Nick Rewalt and Jack Rewalt. One and two. That's Royce Hart, enough. three. Yeah. Peter Hudson, four. Oh, yeah. That's a good list. Ian Stewart, five. Oh, yeah. Ian. Three Brownlow Stewart. This is where they do start to stretch a little bit. Brad are they, Green, six. Are they talking talent or. Uh, talent, yeah, it's, it's sort of talent. Full package. Package. Brad Green's talent. a bloody good player. Seven, Jeremy Howe. Right. Eight. Takes the greatest marks of all time. Eight, Maverick Weller. Good looking man. <laughs> Nine, Tom Bell Chambers. He looks good. Ten, Liam Jones. And then Richo. So where am I? Eleven. So, but what was the criteria, <laughs> Rich? I'm asking you what the criteria. 11. <laughs> 11. What Just was the criteria? favourite yeah. Tasmanian. You were behind Liam Jones. <laughs> I'll be that's honest. The best you were behind Mav as well, too. That's pretty funny. I, I pretty, like Mav. I love Mav. He's a great bloke. But 
I don't know what the criteria is, so how can I judge that? It was just their, their best and favourite Tasmanian oh, football. Oh, well, they don't rate well. Serious. Jack Rewalt, but Liam Jones ahead of Richo. Liam's the greatest I Tasmanian played with, footballer. I played with Liam's dad. I would have put Booney in there just for bits <laughs> and giggles. I'll, I'll admit I'm a bit flat on 11. <laughs> Where's Tim Lane? 11th, I thought at least after Ange Stewart. <laughs> What other Tassie icons have we got there? <laughs> David Post Foster. Post-drafts in there? David Foster. The great axe man. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm a bit flat, Rich. Oh, well, we just... Richo might be changing what he's angry about after that Tasmanian list has just come to light. Now, last week, Richo... Yes? What were you sick of last week? I forget. Oh, that cat that's been... Oh, the cat. I still haven't right. found the owner. What? There is, it, is, there. It been, is there been an update on it? No, I still have. So I'm looking for the owner of the cat that keeps coming in and eating my it's cat's still food in. at night. I'm serious. Over the last month, it would have eaten 100 bucks worth of the premium dental care cat food that my cat Kev eats. <laughs> and I'm going to invoice the owner when I find them. But what I are you going to do to the cat if you get the cat? No, I don't. I'm not. I love cats. You're not a violent man. No, I'm not a violent man. No, he's not. So I just want to be. I just want to be reimbursed for the food. You used that to show a little bit of rage out in the field from time to time, though, didn't you? Yeah, you're starting to niggle me today, <laughs> sorry, mate. You've got that little bit of shit magnet about you today. <laughs> Anyway. that day I niggled you when we were in the car in uh, Los Angeles and you'd taken the wrong yeah. turn into South Central Los Angeles. Tell that another ooh, day. And it started to look pretty dicey, at that, but we didn't know where to go. And then uh, I said, oh, he was in the front with Kane Pettifer trying to figure out where to go. I said, oh, oh Burke, the Burke and trust. Will's in the front end. <laughs> and he lost his Typical. mind. Typical. Wanted to kick me out. <laughs> Typical Nathan Hummer, just sitting in the back, just, <laughs> just adding, chirping. adding just nothing chirping. to anything. <laughs> and just chirping. Well, anyway, what's doing my head in this this week yep. is this whole AFL v NRL uh, restart yep. debate. Seriously, you've got people whinging saying, oh, the NRL did it better. You know, why are the AFL starting late? Who cares? Why can't we just be happy that the NRL's back and we watched it, you know, the last weekend, it was fantastic. Why can't we just be happy for both sports? I'm happy the NRL's back. I'm happy the AFL's back. You know, I'm pumped watching it. Peter Volandis has done a great job. He got on the front foot. I love the crowd noise, as we said before. I even like the cutouts. People are bagging the cutouts in the crowd. Why not? Most of them. There's Why a few, not? A few curly ones got through. No, but that was that was silly. We won't go into that. But it, it gave a bit of revenue to the clubs. People paid to have their cutouts yep. there. In these times, why are we whinging about it? And I'm wrapped the AFL's coming back. They're not the same, though, let's be honest. They're not the same. The AFL's dealing with six states. Yeah. The NRL mm. was dealing with two. Um, I'm just sick of the, the whole NRL v yeah. AFL thing. All the whinges out there. People bagging the crowd noise, the cutouts. Just be happy. Yeah. Seriously, we've been locked it in, uh, in our houses for 10 weeks. Be happy that the sport's back, NATO. Yes, I agree with you, Matt. Who's your favourite current NRL player? Uh, Cameron Smith. Yeah, what about someone from outside the storm? Uh, Freddie Fidlock. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie Fidler. You could have gone with Wally Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> I love the storm. Yeah. Uh, we looked at the main games last round. We're just going to look at maybe your off-Broadway games. Some of the, the, not the big clashes, but we're just as excited nonetheless. Brisbane versus Fremantle. Gentlemen, this game is at... Uh, it's at the really Gabba. Sure. Is that the, the Gabba? Gabba, yeah. Gabba $1.29. Fremantle, $3.50. Tough. Win this one it was going to be a tough opening for Brisbane, I reckon, this year before COVID hit. Now the game's up in Brisbane to start yeah. the season. It suits them down to the ground. I think they beat Fremantle. I think Fremantle are going to be a lot better than what they were last year. They nearly knocked the Bombers off round one, but Brisbane for me. But it's not going to be a blowout. 1-39, no. to I reckon. I think they only lost one game at the Gabba last year, and that was against Richmond in the finals. But the form actually uh, didn't look that good in round one against oh. Hawthorne, Brisbane. And they've actually, if you look at it now, they lost their last three games last year. They lost to Richmond twice, obviously, and then um, got uh, knocked out by the Giants and then lost in round one. So they're actually going for their fifth loss in a row. It's almost um, like the second year blues, isn't yeah. it? It's always hard. Or a horse that's second up, ran so well first up. There's a lot of pressure on Brisbane. So I think they'll win, but I think it'll be pretty close, yeah. And for me, the better of the round, Carlton, 249, take on the Demons, $1.54. Carlton actually better backed in that side. Melbourne, this I've just said it time and time again, the they don't like it when it, the going gets tough. They don't like it when, they've got, when their backs are against the wall, Melbourne. They'll lose this one. $2.49 for Carlton, for me, is just money for old rope. Do you agree? <laughs> I love yeah. it. He just throws it out there. Yeah. Uh, the loser of this game sits at 0-2. And, and it's a long way back from there in a 17-game season. I reckon you've got to go 10-5 and 5 from that point, Nate, to play finals. So it's already... It's already a huge game. 
Uh, I thought Carlton, after quarter time against Richmond in round one, now that was a, an eternity ago, but they actually look pretty good. Um, I'm almost tempted to go with Carlton here. Well, it depends yeah. how good their forward setup is, the Blues. Obviously, Charlie Curnow won't be playing, but... Uh, Let's see... Um, Jack Martin hurt himself at training too. So yeah. how, where do they get their goals from? It's always been Carlton's problem. So for me, I think Melbourne win this game, but it'll be close. GWS, $1.32 take on North Melbourne, $3.42. This one, I what's, assume being What's played. the line here in this GWS game? 19 and a half points. I'm going to take that. I think GWS at the line against the Kangaroos. I think the Kangaroos will be okay again this year, but I think the Giants are going to be very hard to beat this year in any game. Yeah, I think so. They're my, they're my premiership tip, the Giants, because... No crowds. I mean, let's not being a smart Alec, but they haven't had crowds their whole. No, <laughs> but they haven't. Hum. Think about it. Yeah, well, they've had some people. No, but they don't. They've been. They're used to generating yeah, their own it, yeah. enthusiasm. Mm. Richmond and Collingwood, they get that <coughs> adrenaline off the crowd. I just think the Giants are a, a really that good bet. So first year win the this Tigers one. won the premiership in seventeen when they played the Giants at the MCG. Mm. Ninety-five thousand people. It would have been ninety-four and a half thousand mm. Richmond supporters. Yeah, it was. The loudest crowd I've ever heard. Yeah. And on, to be on the other end of that, it's intimidating. Yeah, it is. Mm. Hey, going to look at the brown low before we move on to uh, a little new segment we've got. Patrick Cripps, $6.50, has been well backed. He was $7, now into $6.50. Nat Fife at $7. Dustin Martin at $8. Patrick Dangerfield at 9 And Tom Mitchell at $10. I'd be staying away from Tom Mitchell. He has come out himself and said he's not back to full strength, despite... Mm. But this little break would have even helped Mitchell, though, wouldn't yeah. it? Given him longer What's to get over his leg. He did Cripps, play round one. Cripps probably got three in round one. Just about pressed here from Richmond was really good, but yeah, I'm not arguing with that. Cripps is, Cripps is, is there a player. Is there a bolter? I is reckon it? there is. I, there's a few players that I think at odds. I mean, Tim Kelly at 15, with Nick Nat Newey back, um, being the number one midfielder there, you can't tag them all, so I think Tim Kelly uh, will go well. And I'm really keen on Stephen Cornelia at $23, being back to his best form. Jack McRae is the one for me. 34 bucks. I reckon I'm going to take Jack McRae to win it. I'm going to take him top three. I'm going to take him top five. What's Dunkley? Dunkley, as I roll down the list, uh, is 51. 51. I like Dunkley, yeah. yeah. Oh, Richo. We're always a bit hesitant to put it out to the fans, boys, because in the past, when we've asked for fan engagement, mm. if I'm, I'm not going to piss in your pocket and tell you it's raining, we don't get much. Right. right? Just for whatever reason, people don't like replying maybe to Maybe you're us. not putting I've, the right stuff out there. Well, maybe, you? but... You I think I've... Hashtags. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you a PR expert? Isn't that your role? Yeah, but anyway, well, I've worked You've it out. You've sort of clipped yourself there, haven't yeah, you? I have. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I've worked it out because we put out, last week we, uh, we, we, we seeded this. Yeah. We want to appoint, we like people that wear the long sleeve, yeah. or as a few of us in the industry call, the coward sleeve. Of course, yeah. if you're wearing a long sleeve, you know, you're a bit of a coward. No, you're not. That's so ridiculous. we're going to call this the long coward sleeve team of the century. And we asked for everyone to send in their submissions. And we, Richard, you put it up on your socials. I did. We got, we, got a, we got a really good response. It, it, can I just put it out? It, you're it's not, not a, a coward. You're not team. a coward if you wear a long sleeve. You said that, not me. <laughs> It's the you're long just going sleeve. You're the back of Alistair Clarks and being the Hawthorne the long coach. Sleeve. No, well, why, why, why would you wear, wear a long sleeve? sleeve? It's why a long sleeve a long team of the century. Well, that exactly. It snowed in Canberra cold. last year. So, you had a long sleeve. So we, what are we doing? Only the cowards so, have covered so up. So we've got our full back line today. We'll do the half back line. Yeah, next well, that's, week. we were okay. going to just go in lines, but no. this has been so successful. Well, you guys have decided on the back pocket. I'm not sure on the back pocket, but let's go. We haven't decided on anything yet. This is going to be a robust discussion. Can I just throw out a few nominations then for the full back line? Yep. Okay. So if you. Brad Hardy, of course. Kate Simpson from Carlton. Um, Michael Hurley, the Bombers wears long sleeves a bit. Stephen well, Silvani. Well, I think if we throw Michael Hurley in there, we need to discuss. It can't be someone that wears it just when it's cold. I think 50% of the time you need to wear 50 it. 50% of the time. You need to be known yeah. as a... Like, I, I would say, so Michael Hurley, i go... He doesn't come across Probably as a not. long sleeve to me. So Soss always is. Soss was. Brad Soss Hardy was. Brad Hardy goes in the back pocket. He, he won a Brownlow be. medal. Lock when it in. was 38 degrees up in the Gabba, he would wear a long sleeve. Lock, lock Brad Hardy in. See, that's, a cre that's what I'll yeah. say. It's not a coward sleeve. Yeah. If it's hot and you're still wearing it, it's not a coward sleeve. Scotty Turner from Richmond. Any Richmond oh, fans yep. would remember that. Um, an old school one, one of my favourite players, Trevor Barker, wore it a lot. Barks. Yeah. Daryl White. Daryl White. Daryl White. Play, he played a bit more up the ground. They'll be up at half back, these guys. So I think we lock Hardy in. Hardy's got to go pocket. in. Sauce has to go Sauce in. Sauce at fullback. Well, my no, other back one. pocket is Damien Hardwing. Did he wear it? Yeah, he did. That's the conjecture. I think he did a fair bit, but was it enough I to warrant him was. a spot? You're I gonna reckon back we, him in? Yeah, I'm going to back it in. Damien Hardwing. All right, so Damien, so, all right. What well, about got, Jasper Pittard? 
in the yeah, back. Yeah, more half back, I reckon. Okay. He's so he might come in next week. He's so competing. Keep your Simpson. suggestions coming through. And Christo. We were, we, were, we were so happy to just have the, the audience. Oh, Ange Christo's good. Mark Bass. Yes. Sydney Swans. He's he, a good left footer. I reckon I had about 10 nominations for Mark Bass. So send through your nominations. We're going to do the half back flank next week. So what if we'll you work our so way up the ground? Hardy? So at the moment, we've got, starting the back line, we've got Hardy. Yep. Sauce. Hardwick. And you're not happy with Dimmer? <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to go I'm with gonna some ask tape. Him. I'm going to text him and ask him. Well, last week we did something we've never done before. We seeded another segment. We put a hook in it. We were very excited. Now, I speak of the very, some will call it self-indulgent, Brownie's best ever 22. The best 22 <laughs> players that Nathan played with. This so. is the best team that I ever played with across it's the Bulldogs. It's only self-indulgent if you put yourself in the team. Which I haven't put right, myself good. in this good. team, and, and, the, and the Tigers, obviously. Good. So from, from the back pocket... I've uh, got, is there some criteria, though, to this? Yeah, yeah, I've had to have played with them for at least two years, yep. um, and they've got to be at almost their best that they played. So, uh, unfortunately, I played two years with Wayne Campbell, who was a captain of Richmond. I've left him out because he was injured a lot in those uh -huh. last two years. So yep. he, he, uh, he didn't play a lot. In that period, okay. so uh, if Wayne Campbell had played 44 games for that yep. period, clearly Four. he would have been in the team. Four-time best and fairest winner. Wayne. Yeah, before I got there, though. Right. Okay. Okay. Ah. okay. I like so, that. So read it out. In the back pocket, I've got Matthew Dent. His nickname was Psycho Chicken Dent because he would do anything. <laughs> His kickouts <laughs> were good. the best. Darren That's Gasper, the best ever. fullback, and Two Chris time. Chris Newman in a back pocket. Two-time All Australian yep. Gasper. So from the half-back line, and this is a brilliant one, Rowan Smith, All-Australian, Chris Grant won a Brownlow medal, Robert Murphy, All-Australian all Australian. Yeah, on the half-back line. Sharp. Good half-back line. Now through the middle, Brett Deledio, very good player, Scott West, seven-time yep. best and fairest, that, and that. Brad Johnson, outside him and Granny, pound for pound, the best player I played with. Scott West, seven BNFs is incredible, isn't it? Think about that. Half-forward, Paul Hudson. Hawthorne player. player. Yeah. Centre half forward Matthew Richardson. Hey. Half forward flank Nathan Eagleton. Just reel off those Hutto stats just for people who don't know. In his second year when they won a premiership, Hutto kicked 62 goals at the Hawks. And then the three years that he was playing at half forward with me, I think he kicked 62, 57, and 40 odd. So That's good during numbers. that period was really yeah. good. Full forward line, Luke Darcy, Jack Rewalt. And Kane Pettifer. The P train. Pettifer. I'd be surprised about Pettifer. Kane Pettifer. But no, that's a good... A three-year period, Pets kicked 37, 33, and I think 34, and was in the top two on a couple of occasions for goal assists and, in the AFL. And you know the other one, he, 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 I think one year he won the inside 50s in the competition. So. That was his mountain. The rest of his career was here. Like, <laughs> it was very good in those three years, Pets. Uh, so first ruck, Scott Wind, Kane Brown Johnson, Mike. ruck Rover. Jose Ramiro, Rover. Ooh. And on the bench, I've got Joel Bowden. Daniel G in Syracuse, I think, was the best sub anybody's ever had right. when the sub rule came in. Tony Liberatore, because I can get him to do a Ooh. job on anybody, and he would scratch the best tag he played it. with. Best, best teammate I played with. Better than Liber as a tagger? Tony, that is Liber. I thought you said Jose Ramiro. No, Tony oh, yeah. Liberatore. Oh, right, eh? Jose was uh, Rover. Oh, he was, yeah. And the last bench spot goes to Nathan Foley. Okay, Nathan so... Nathan Foley. Oh, he Good was dream in, team in Nathan Foley. Nathan Foley in was in the All-Australian squad mm -hmm. one year. Not the team, Played but Played in the 40. 2008 game. He did. Nathan, now you weren't self-indulgent, but if you had to put yourself yeah. into that team, <laughs> who do you leave out? I'd take Jack out, Jack Rewalt. <laughs> Rewalt? Yeah. yeah. Full forward? He was just... Uh, in that criteria, he'd had one OK season coming out. Um... And the reason why Blossom was Matthew retired and then all of a sudden Jack... But well, now maybe I'll take Why don't you put Richard off full forward? Pettifer out. I'll take Pettifer out. <laughs> and one, <laughs> other, one other question. Uh, Joel Bowden yep. was a two-time All-Australian player. Yep. Surely you can squeeze him into that back line. Well, I went on metres gain, Matt, and Joel Bowden was an uh, unbelievable intercept mark, was a great kick, was probably the most talented player I played with Joel Bowden, but did chip it sideways a lot right. and got a lot of... Little cheap ones. So, whereas I think. Did you tell I him that when you played with him? Many times. Did you? When we were out in the piss, yes. <laughs> uh, didn't go down that well any time I told him either. Uh, and then Paddy Bowden come in and tell me off as well. But uh, Matthew Dent. Um, no, he was a good kid. That's the best nick that is the best nickname you'll come Psycho across. Psycho Chicken Dent. <laughs> I'll tell you he what. He used to get a, an allowance from his wife because uh, she was worried about him. And so then we'd go down to the indoor cricket thing, me, him, and Mark Alvey, and he'd go, I haven't got any money this week, boys. Can you pay for me? <laughs> What a couple of brain surgeons there, Brown, <laughs> Alvey and Dent. <laughs>
Well, some are calling it the most successful segment the show has ever had. Last week, we, it was on debut, Who Would Win? Now, we got some fanfare on, on social media. Terry Wallace got in there because we put it up on, on your yeah, on he your thought he was funny. Terry Wallace coached you both. He said, all you need to do is gut run it, Ricky. Well, that that's a good point by Plough because uh, Nathan... Nathan's best time around the Botanical Gardens, which is just yep, about, a, about a kilometre away from where we are right now in South Melbourne. Nathan's best time around the tan was 1734. <laughs> How old was that? Yes, it was I could walk that. And my best time was 13, so clearly I'm the better gut runner. Repeat speed. And plough, shut up. Just a, well, here's hey? a, Rick, um, so you did get one, one supporter. Rick Oxford, Brownie wins. Three goals to two goals, five points. <laughs> I was players. Chris Mannix, was 18 good. Richos would win by 40 goals. No offence to Brownie, he was a gun, but Richo is another level. Thanks, mate. Yeah, and then Jamie right. Genides, ridiculous question, the number 12 would win easily. Oh, I saw that so. on Twitter. <laughs> so the Twitter sphere spoke. Quite I've spoken that, uh, I know, Jamie. Jamie. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> hey, so this mate. week, He's a mate we've, got another four, we've got another four matchups. Yeah. Right this one, this is going to test you. 18 Spider Burdens. Now remember, Ooh. they've got to play in all positions, eighteen positions. Yep. Versus eighteen, Caleb Daniels. Caleb Daniels. Without a doubt. No, I don't. Oh, I don't reckon. No, you know why? Caleb Daniels. What's I, he going to do no, in the okay. ruck? Okay, so this the four Caleb Daniels could stand so on his head, maybe, and then so big spider. He just grabs it out of the ruck and kicks it in the air. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, no, exactly. I'm going what, spider. As soon as he grabs it. Little what? man tackles him. Well, it's just going to be like no, a, no. having a little ants hanging off him. I'm saying a, I'm going 18 spiders. The only way they could do it is if the Caleb Daniels teamed up one, and got on each other's shoulders in the ruck, because they are allowed to do that, I guess. We'll allow that. That's the only way. If not, yeah. Spider Burton does mm -hmm. it easy. Caleb for me. Uh, <laughs> he would how, slice just tell, how would Caleb win that? Hey? How would Caleb win? He's, well, he's got a, if Spider grabs it out of the ruck, <laughs> Caleb would have to tackle him, get it to ground, and then just slice him up. But I just think Spider, mm, yeah. grab it, kick it up in the air. Spider's and... got a metre and a half on him. So if he wants to grab it, then he just gets tackled every time. It's All got right, to come I'd to just, ground. I'd still think Spider yep. would. Be. Hey, All he has to do if he grabs it out of the ruck, all he has to do is touch him, like that, and it's holding the ball. I think no, that rule's it. changed. I think he'll get it to his ball. Well, he could just tap it to another Spider. Mm. I'm, I'm going Spider. Hey, it wasn't that coordinated, though, when it No, it wasn't. I remember he kicked a goal to beat Hawthorne one day at the Telstra. I couldn't believe it. 18, Richos versus the defender that Richo said he had the most trouble in ever, 18, Glen Archers. Across the ground. Ooh. I'm going Richo. I, I think I'd go Arch. Oh. He, to be honest with you, when I was probably 19, 20 and I played on Glen Archer, I'll admit it, I was petrified of Arch. <laughs> he, he was... He was ferocious, wasn't he? Did would you, you ever he, Would he hurt no. you? Would he always be oh, you? He enjoyed hurting you. And mm. back then, when you took a mark, you could really make them earn it. As yeah, Spud, knuckle sandwich. Old, as, as um, you know, our great old mate Danny Frawley would say, you know, you've got to give him a bit of an ear massage. Jeez, Arch could give a good ear massage. <laughs> 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 All right. Now, 18 current brownies. Now, you're in, I'll get, you're in good shape. Like, you're in pretty good. For an ex-footballer, you're in good shape. And 18 brownies, <laughs> 18 current brownies, versus the 18... The current Oakley Chargers side. Oh, no, I'd go the Chargers every day of the week. Brownie's, although he looks okay, he's, his tank is very ordinary. I'll back myself in. <laughs> <laughs> You're chasing around 17-year-olds, Nate. You're 40 years of age. Yeah, <laughs> I'd get ahead of themselves. <laughs> All right, and finally, I've, I had to put 18 Hummers. I've, what, put uh, himself in. I've never seen you play Hummers. 18 Hummers versus 25 Zach Dawson's. What? <laughs> Why have you got 25 Zach Dawson? He was a good player, Zach Dawson. He was not a good player. You speak to Ross Lyon <laughs> and he gave Zach, Zach Dawson, Dawson all the major jobs. <laughs> Zach Dawson by 15 goals. <laughs> Zach Dawson. Idiot. <laughs> that one fell flat. <laughs> Hey, uh, we're going to wrap things up again. Thank you very much to Callaway for, for coming on board and providing these two with, with golf clubs and me. Absolutely nothing, but that's just the way the, uh, the cookie crumbles these days. But before I go, I'm going to leave each week with a segment called Hummer's Hypotheticals because I was driving down. I, I drove past a supermarket the other day, and I was thinking, if you were locked in a supermarket yep. for the rest of your life with that current stock on the, that's in there, yep. would you be able to live for the rest of your life? For, geez, so I'm 45. If I live so till I'm got, 80, I've got 35 years. With just that current stock? Yeah, I, I, I think I could. Jeez, I think... Done. You yeah, obviously you'd be out run of out of fruit and veggies pretty quick. Cool. I'll tell you what, for the, you you did, yeah. for the first... You've got a week of veggies, that's it. For the mm. first <laughs> 25 years, I wouldn't touch any of the tin food. I'd put that away for 25 yeah. years. All right, well, here's the actual hypothetical. This is how it all started. 
What would you eat first? What would be your first? Oh, you, I'd go the pizza shapes. No, you go the fruit and veg, the fresh fruit and well, veg. Well, and you do have a freezer on hand, so you'd be smart about that. You'd stack a lot of stuff in the freezer out the back. You just don't touch the cans <laughs> for at least 25 Depends years. Depends how many frozen chickens have got out the back, because they roast their own chickens as well. Yeah. They, I mean, I think you could survive, but you'd be able to meat and veggie pretty quick. Oh, you'd, no, you'd survive. You could do some um, exercise, though, like up and down the lanes. Yeah, no, yeah. I reckon you could live. Repeat speed. You could easily live the rest of your life. Hey, this is the actual one. Yeah, OK. If you, you were both... the dog there that you put the money in? Yeah. <laughs> the guy talk. Like Wilson? <laughs> If you were paid $300,000 a year at the start of every year, January 1st, I come to you with $300,000. Goes into your bank account and your bank account. The pay, cut, pay cut for Matthew. <laughs> she's hasn't been on Especially that for with, 20 years. <laughs> Doesn't match JobKeeper. $300,000, that's a lot of money. $300,000 gets put into your bank account on January 1st and yours, but you two cannot see each other, speak to each other, be friends. Would you do it? I wouldn't, no. No. <laughs> Lady answered first. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it's a lot of money, isn't it? <laughs> it's a lot of money. I reckon you have to start around the two mil mark, I reckon. Two mil? Mm. Ooh, Friendship's geez. worth a lot more than money, mate. Yeah. yeah, true, true. All right, well, that will do us from the beautiful Croc Studios. Hopefully, the <laughs> Collies boys stop shitting in the toilets above us oh, and we can get... <laughs> We can get back in our form. main studio. Thank you to Croc. Thank you to Callaway. Please give us a like, comment, and subscribe. In fact, I'm going to do something that's very unethical. If you give us a good review, five stars on Apple, now that this is frowned upon, I will send you some Sportsbet merchandise. All right? You're not allowed to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because we need some good reviews. He doesn't have clearance to do that. <laughs> if you're having a punt this weekend, do it responsibly.